a veteran Man of Steel, enters the multiverse. Here's a look at the new Mattel DC Multiverse. This is the Lobo Collect and Connect Superman. Having spent 10 years in solitude, Superman returns to fight for justice in a new disinterested and indecent planet. thrilled to be back in the swing of things with these multiverse reviews. Unfortunately though, getting these can always be problematic because half the time I have to find them and source them out on eBay. We just simply don't carry these most of the time in Canadian stores. At any rate, taking the tape measure, put it right to the very top of Superman's head, we're going to have a look, a gander if you will. According to the Ultra Measuretron 5000, the Superman, the aged Superman, stands at a 6.6 .6 inch height which works out in centimeters. Go ahead and do that right now. 16.8 centimeters tall. First thing we'll have a look at is the accessories for building Lobo. I've wanted to start with Superman because he does come with the torso piece for Lobo. And then of course we will add the arms, the legs, the lower torso, and of course the head as well. It's interesting to note that the vest is removable. It's just a soft plastic. And being that it doesn't have any sleeves, I would think it would be safe to say that you could probably go shirtless, completely shirtless, if you wanted to be displaying Lobo like that. He does also come included with his necklace, which always kind of looks like a, something He-Man should be sporting. It's a soft plastic. Uh, it doesn't look like it's got any paint on it other than the ruby stone in the center there. And like I said, it's made of a softer plastic. There's not really a whole lot to be said for it just yet other than tipping off to the point that I find it's a little on the small side. Multiverse figures usually, usually, of course, are a little bit of a larger variety. We looked at a long time ago the DC Universe Lobo that also came with his trusty dog. And, of course, that was a much larger figure. This looks like, I mean, if you really look at it, it's not going to be that much bigger than Superman at all. Anyways, that is the torso piece for Lobo, I guess, so that nobody's looking at just a severed stump for this whole review. We'll just move it off to the cam the off the side of the camera. He does also come with his flight hands. What Superman would be complete without a set, a pair of flight hands? Uh, these are the same flight hands, the same flat palmed hands as what we've also received with the Superman before as well, which I think was the rebirth or reborn Superman that we looked at before believe it might have been from the Clayface wave. It's been so long ago that I looked at a multiverse figure line, but again, a pair of flat hands. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Also, at the time that this set is out, picking it up, of course, on eBay, there's also the Lex Luthor set, which is going for a an incredibly absorbent price. I'm going to see if I can try to pick that set up, but I don't know. Again, picking up online always becomes a bit of a sticky wicket. Anyways, let's have a look at the figure. Sticky Wicket. The figure itself, of course, making use of a standard new multiverse figure line body. One of the biggest exceptions, usually, is the fact that now it has ball socketed thighs, which I guess could be the first place where I could talk a little bit about this figure. Uh, I've mentioned this before, so happened to also be, I think, with that Superman from the previous wave. Uh, it doesn't, they opt to paint, I think unnecessarily, to be honest, but they paint extra trunks on him. I think more, more is acceptable just to have the trunks looking like that. Maybe they're a little bit too underoo-like that they bring the, the trunks out, the lower trunks of Superman a little bit further out. It kind of actually makes it look more like Daisy Duke really short shorts rather than instead the lower, just again, the trunks of uh, Superman. So I probably would have not put the red covering while well, bringing further down into the coloring of the blue plastic in the thighs. That's just my own personal opinion. Also proportionately, and I'm sure I've mentioned this also before as well, the legs, the way that they're built now, often, often makes for very narrow looking Superman, especially like his torso, because it has to carry then out into his thighs. Just can't help but notice that this section right here is very very thin when like the top half of his body looks like it's pretty much tried and true for the previous uh, outings with the DC Universe figures. I'm gonna have a look at his face which actually in all honesty I like the face quite a bit. 
it is aged Superman not excessively aged I think where the faulting I could make for the figures head sculpt is the way that they've painted on the gray sort of haphazardly it didn't seem like there's a rhyme nor a reason as to way where they painted the gray uh, Superman generally had the gray on the sides and here it just sort of looks like they've just dry brushed anywhere they just basically took the brush and hit the back of his head and wherever that ended up sticking is where he ended up getting a little bit of the gray so it doesn't seem like there was much thought process put into the grayer aspects of Superman's hair he gets a little bit of blue a little bit is an understatement it's a fair bit of blue that's been added to the top of his hair of course, he's got the Superman curl there as well. But I like the head sculpt. I think the head sculpt is certainly one of the best recently in recent memories of the Supermans that we have gotten. Of course, one other thing that's notable about this particular Superman is the new emblem that the more aged Superman ends up sporting. It still remains to this day one of my all-time favorite Superman logos. Gone, really, is the yellow in favor of only red, with jet black filling in all those extra little creases. Uh, the rest of his body, again, pretty much utilizes the same tried and true go-to for Superman. It doesn't really seem like there's a whole lot different with the figure here. I like his cape. I like that it's not a very wide, uh, broad cape. It's very narrow. It's sort of kind of pinched and crimped in the middle there. So it kind of contains itself. As you could probably guess, it is soft plastic. That it does have a little bit of like flexibility to it. But I like the cape. I'm trying to remember actually if there was a logo on the back. I feel like there isn't. Somebody I'm sure will correct me down below. Coloring, like I said, is pretty good. It falls, of course, within the problems of utilizing the same type of multiverse figure body. One of the biggest being, biggest being the operative word, he does have extremely large feet, which actually at times I've had a tough time, a struggle if you will, getting the figure to stand. I also notice he's got this extra little lip. I don't know if you can see it right there. There's a, like a divot, a little, an impression, like a little piece of plastic that's sticking up there. He actually has it on both sides. I'm wondering what that is supposed to be. Maybe originally, peg holes that they've just filled in does this one sticks a little bit further out i don't think that's what's causing the figure to topple over as frequently as it is but he does have definitely very big big feet causing the figure at times if you don't have him completely firmly planted seems to rock the figure back almost to the point where the figure just topples back so you have to kind of make sure that the feet are firmly planted when you are displaying the figure now let's have a look at his posability his head, of course, rotates all the way around, up and down, uh, not really much side to side. His arms hinge outward. You can also rotate them all the way around, just like that. You can swivel at the bicep. You can bend at the elbow. And no, unfortunately, the arm here doesn't swivel from the point that the hinge is further down. Just this part doesn't move at all. It's only the bicep. The wrists rotate all the way around. Uh, he does have the upper torso crunch as well as the waist swivel. Legs now, being if you had done the comparison, which unfortunately I didn't end up doing, the older universe figures, of course, would have had that cut in the thigh, a very obvious straight line where you could split the, egg, the legs out. Now they've done it in favor of a ball joint. The only, again, the problem with the ball joint is to connect it to an already narrow waist area does make the legs look very, very thin. Well, not thin per leg, but this section here very thin versus the upper torso. I know, we already talked about that. Swivel at the top cut of the thigh. He has a double hinge on the knee, which is a nice, pleasant surprise to see. And he also has a hinge back and forth on the feet. A little bit of unfortunate paint chippage has happened right there. Yes, I am making up words. This one, not so bad. This one does have a little bit of plaguing problems with paint chipping. That's a whole lot of peas. All around, I do like the figure. Uh, it falls, of course, within that sort of category as if you like multiverse figures, you'll be probably wanting to jump on, get on board, get, picking up this particular wave. Um, of course, with it being also multiverse figures, you can see how Superman is having a real tough time standing here. Uh, because he is a multiverse figure, he's going to probably, he's going to fall into the same problems 
uh, mold-wise as some of the other multiverse figures that we've looked at before on this channel. Primarily, primarily, it's just the fact that this section is very, very narrow because they are utilizing new ball joints. Don't know why, don't know why that the figure is having such a tough time to stand. Oh, right, yeah, it's because he's got big, giant, honking feet. Of course, everybody who's in the know already knows that McFarlane Toys has now acquired the licensing for the DC properties, at least from a figure standpoint. This means that we're coming to the very end of the life of the Mattel DC brand, something that has spanned over decades. Decades, if you think about it. First picking up the original Superman in the Superheroes line. I actually found that at a flea market. I didn't know what the line was. And then, of course, leading my journeys through the universe before finally ending up in the multiverse. It's been a fun journey. And sadly, as we are kind of coming down to the last little few waves that Mattel is churning out, I don't know if that is also inflating the prices of these things. This wave wasn't terrible, but the upcoming and currently released Lex Luthor wave... Most eBay sellers are even splitting the waves in half, selling four figures a piece, or four figures per wit per set. And those are going for crazy prices as well. So I don't know if maybe the, the demand for picking the future multiverse figures, at least whatever's left of Mattel's branding, I don't know if they're going to be going for a crazy price as well, but kind of getting ahead of ourselves. Relative to this review, and talking a little bit about Superman here, it's a nice looking figure. It falls, of course, into that category that if you are an avid collector of Mattel, of course, as it's ending its lifespan here, you probably already know what to expect. The proportions of Superman are on par with the proportions of every other superhero that has pretty much used this same body. This body has been tried and true, the go-to, if you will, for many of the character releases under the Multiverse brand. There's something, of course, to be said for the fact that he's proportionally a little bit bigger in the top and a little scrawny in the waist section down. But still, there's a charm to be said for this particular Superman. My only real gripe I could make about this figure is the fact that the paint in the head is a little on the sloppy side. Again, it's like they didn't really know where gray should go on Superman. Even though there is production artwork, there is artwork to be based from on the outside of the packaging. I don't know why they just didn't match it to that. If you could overlook the little hiccups on the paint, like I said, it's a good-looking figure. I just wish he could stand just a little bit better. Today, we were having a look at the new, not the newest, not, not, not the newest, newest, but we were having a look at the fairly new. This is the Mattel DC Multiverse. This is the Lobo Collect and Connect wave. Yes, there are going to be three more figures because this is a smaller wave. Three more figures before we build Lobo. And today, by the way, we're having a look at a slightly aged Superman. Still looking good, though. Still looking good for... I wish I could look this good for retiring for, you know, 10 years or so and coming back. Actually, 10 years, well, 10 years would be putting me at 50. I, either way, I probably won't look like Superman. Either way, though, if you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other previous multiverse figure reviews, yeah, you guessed it, Jacob. There's a playlist. There's a playlist for the multiverse figure reviews. And certainly stay tuned because we're going to have a look at three more figures and then we're finally going to build Lobo. I say finally, this is really only the first figure that we're having a look at. Either way, guys, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. More videos will be following soon and I'll see you guys next time.